Hi, Jolie. Good to see you again. Good to and see you. Too. In this time of the plague. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we're going to talk about something that's really important, or, or you are rather, um, and I'm going to introduce you here. So many of us have talked to nature, have had nature say things to us. It turns out nature is talking to itself constantly, or all the little critters everywhere, from little amoebas up to uh, uh, complex animals, uh, and definitely the plants, the fungi in the soil, etc. But I don't need to tell you this, Jolie, because you can explain it all to us. It's it's just phenomenal. So let's hear. <laughs> um, well, I can't explain it all because wow, it is so beyond me. But I the little glimpses that I'm able to get about the intelligence of nature blow me away. And it seems like you know Darwin a long time ago said. Plants are just little, like little animals. Like, and he believed that plants were intelligent and him and his son did. But at that point, people were putting him down for having all his theories about evolution. And so he sort of like, didn't talk about the intelligence of nature, but he, he, he basically was like, you know, their brains are in their roots and people thought it was so outrageous back then, except the indigenous people who believe, you know, who that's what they believe. Yeah. But, but it's turning out plants are, are like little animals. I mean, they're smart. You know that lawn in, in um, my front yard that I was trying to get the yarrow to grow? So there's like all of this invasive grass and then there's like little pockets of yarrow. And so I've been like cutting down the grass and sort of like, but I, I've, been, I've been like talking to the yarrow as if it's an intelligent being and watching it. And what it's done is it's taken the boundaries of the grass and it's like pulled all of its resources to the edges and so now it's just fighting the grass on a little edge because it's got the whole center. Huh. And so it's so interesting to think about the plant being intelligent and underneath the ground, there's like, you know, there's an incredible language, which we're just figuring out basically, like barely scraping the surface, but like underneath the ground, the plants are super territorial. So they have like chemical warfare or, or they help their friends and their friend and their family. And then they're, they're constantly engaging with the soil and the microbes and the bacteria and the and the fungus and the viruses. And so it's like the only one who's not really communicating in that web is us. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We yep. fell out of the we fell out of the cart a long time ago. <laughs> we did. And it's, it makes me wonder like how how did we fall out of the cart? I mean, that is one of the ultimate questions. Yep, right. I have my own theories, but that's not for today's discussion. Right. So uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit also about this one plant, you know, daughter? Yeah, right. Daughter, right. So I think we've talked about this, but daughter, they're parasitic. So it's like this like silly string orangey plant that you look like in the Bay Area, it's like uh, often in the marshes. And it's like, what is that? Is that silly string? Is that trash? but it's parasitic. So it needs to suck all its sugar from other plants. And so they've done experiments where they've had two daughter plants and no, sorry, one daughter plant. And then they plant in front of that daughter, a tomato and a wheat plant. And the, the daughter like has its little tendrils and it circles around and circles around and sm smells the air. And then basically it latches on and like attacks the tomato 90 something percent, 98 percent of the time, like it's choosing the tomato over the over the whatever it was wheat. So, I mean, the, now scientists are starting to pay attention. Like, are these plants intelligent? And yeah. I just think, I mean, they're finding that like plants, if you play the sound of a caterpillar chomping, I, I, I forget which plant you play the just sound of the chomping, the cat, the the plant puts out all sorts of chemicals, like just from the sound. Okay. Yeah, um, when I was young, this is still available, but there was a man named Dave Carlson, typical Minnesota name. And uh, I think that's his name. And um, he invented this solar sonar gardening method where you put up a speaker with um, bird calls, bird sounds, and the plants grew much, much significantly, 10, 20% better uh, due to the presence of the bird sounds. So that's like, uh, again, uh, somehow they're responding to that and interacting with that and nature at work. Now there's hardly any birds left, so. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess like, you know, snakes can hear without ears. So plants can hear like just vi vi vibratory. Um, yeah, and that's that whole, there's a whole new field called agrophonobiology, which oh. is exactly that, where vineyards are experimenting with playing music to wine grapes. And they said that, that the yield was so much better that now the, like, it's like one of the main world agencies on agriculture is now studying agrophonobiology. You know, I got to throw in here because it's so weird. There was a book I saw years ago, 30 years ago, 35, it was older than that. Um, the Elves of Lily Hill Farm. I think it's self-published nowadays. And and the, these grape growers in Michigan, it's for um, Welsh's, you know, for um, juice grapes, uh, Concords. Um, they, they made, they started, the fairies started talking to them, the elves, and they made a deal with them and the elves would help and increase the yield and everything. And there was all these mistakes they made, of course, as humans and, and, and back steps and things. Um, <laughs> but, but it's really quite a fascinating book. So um, uh, if, you're, if, if that strikes your fancy, it's, it's, it's a unique book. Uh, Where do you get that book? Well, I think it's just online, El uh, Elves of Lily Hill Farm, I think is the title, so. Are they related to the Keebler elves, the ones who make the cookies? <laughs> Oh, that may be in the Midwest too, or in New York State. Yeah, that's probably the case. <laughs> they look kind of, they had a kind of a, some sort of a pigeon English with an Irish accent um, type of, <laughs> what they recorded of them. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, and then, you know, you start thinking about like, are viruses intelligent? Mm. Right? I mean, People oh, say that viruses aren't even living, but the fact is that they communicate with each other. They have like, they have very strong languages. They make tools. They're, um, they're some of the most significant life forms on earth. Like if you added up all of the mass of viruses, it would be equivalent to 75 million gray whales. <laughs> mm. Blue whales, blue whales are bigger, yeah. And I mean, viruses are everywhere, right? Yeah. And they're interacting in our, in our ecosystem. Yeah, I think what, in a quart of seawater, there's more virus, there's like billions or trillions. It's just off the map, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, and they are exchanging genetic material. So our genes are constantly interplaying. And I read some work by a forester in British Columbia and she discovered that there were salmon salmon genes in um, Douglas firs. And yeah, the way this occurred was the salmon come up the sam salmon runs, and then the bear eat them and throw the scraps around and then it enters the soil and it enters the trees. And this could all be shown step by step. <laughs> wow, is that from viruses though? Or is that, I mean, how does it That's probably, right? From the actual fish remains. <laughs> so, I mean, these genes are all over the place. We do know, I mean, of course, scientists now know the, we're about uh, a little more than half bacteria and, and viruses inside of us at any given moment, not necessarily during a viral attack, but just normally. And that saves a lot of our genome and um, is very important because when they, when they did the Human Genome Project and they started that up, then they found, hey, there's not enough genes here to account for the whole human being, what's going on? it's in the bacteria inside of us. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. And then when plants and bacteria, you know, it's like, if you think about things in the plants in the pea family, they fix nitrogen. Mm. And the way that they fix nitrogen is that they have a nodule in their root that bacteria live in that then take the nitrogen from the air because our air is 80% nitrogen, 70% nitrogen, but it can't get into the soil unless you have you know, chemical factories or these little bacteria or yeah. lightning, lightning does it. But so, so the bacteria. Tell us about lightning and oak trees. Continue, but you have to, this <laughs> boggles, boggles, boggles. All right, let me just finish on the bacteria. Yeah. So the bacteria, they, um, they, they live inside the root nodules. And before the, they enter the root nodules, there's this complicated signaling that happens between the plant and the bacteria and the plants like um, sitting there and the bacteria is like, can I enter your roots? And the plants like, who the hell are you? Are you friend or foe? And they go through this thing and then boop, they make like a connection. And so there's all, they're, they're communicating all the time. Same with the fungus and the trees. 
before the fungus joins onto the tree roots. Um, yeah. But lightning can fix nitrogen. Lightning is five times the temperature of the sun and it actually takes nitrogen from the air and puts it in the soil. And there's about 8 million lightning strikes a day, I think, or a minute, I, I have to look that up. But like, if you look at the earth from like from space, basically you're seeing lightning go all over the place. It's like the, the nervous system of the earth. It's what keeps the electrical balance of our, of our living being um, in balance. And so lightning is necessary. And oak trees have a special relationship with lightning and people have honored them for that. Like Thor and Zeus are all oak gods and lightning gods, but um, yeah, that's a whole other. Oh, you've got to tell us though. I mean, the, the oaks attract the lightning or something. Uh, well, this is in our oak, in our oak special class. So I guess people have to uh, tune into that. They have to subscribe to that in order to uh, uh, figure it, find out how um, oaks actually attract uh, lightning out of the sky intentionally. I mean, one thing is they have really, really deep roots and they're in the water table so that they're like conductors, right? So they, they're great conductors of electricity. Um, yeah, and then there's all sorts of like human relationships with oaks and lightning. Back when we had the intelligence of the earth, back when we were living, knowing, breathing this intelligence that we're living on a breathing um, sentient planet. And what I love about learning about the intelligence of nature is that it really changes how we walk around in the world. If we start seeing the trees and the plants and the animals as sentient, then it's really a different world and we can't continue to crap on the earth the way that we do. <laughs> yeah. Well, this subject, I mean, just goes on and on. Um, you know, it makes our little studies of the microbiome inside us pale by comparison. And that's extremely important. It turns out almost all chronic disease is associated with changes in the microbiome. Well, how, what's happening on earth? Are there changes? You know, probably. And then um, uh, what happens? You get chronic illness and um, maybe that's what's going on right now. <laughs> And also like the, the microbiome affects our mental health, you know, and maybe there's like some virus or bacteria that's making us greedy, you know, and making yep. us just want to destroy the earth. I don't know. I mean, it's so complicated, um, but yep. it's possible for sure. Yep. And then another virus comes along and tries to make us loving. <laughs> you mean the COVID virus? Is that what yeah. you're thinking? Many people are experiencing that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was my experience. I mean, when I thought I had COVID, I had that dream where it was just like, if you're not kind and transparent and and like loving in every moment through this craziness, we're not gonna make it through. Um, and yeah, maybe this virus is intelligent and maybe it's sent from an intelligent earth, you know, that yeah. that is like loving us and wanting us to remember that we're all one. I mean, when you start th opening the possibility to the earth being intelligent, all, all sorts of things happen. Like, you know, you can start dreaming with the plants because they're intelligent and they can come talk to you that way. Um, yep. You know, the other day I had this incredible experience with the blue heron where it was across 300 feet or like really far away on the, across this reservoir. And I was like trying to talk with it in my mind. And it was like, remember the old stories. And it was like basically saying, remember the old stories. We're in an old story. And I was like, okay. And then it pulls a feather out of its chest and in its beak, it sort of puts a spin on it. Like it threw it, like it didn't just, you know, toss it. It was like, it aimed it with its mouth and the feather slowly came over the water. It took like a minute to like come all the way directly towards me and landed. And now I have it, you know, it gave me this feather. So like, isn't that awesome? Um, so like our earth is so intelligent. And when we can tap into that, boy, we're going to be great herbalists, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, you sent me a picture of the heron. I mean, it was like this big. It was so far away that it was just right across the lake, you know? <laughs> it was amazing. Uh, and yeah, I mean, and like, you know, plants and animals, they also take care of yeah. themselves and they, they can help control the weather. Like, for instance, 
up. Oh, I'm getting, we're getting uh, a little bit to wrap it up. All right, so this final thing is like, they uh, determined that mushrooms in the rainforest, when things are stressed and it's really hot, they'll send out their spores and then that spore will create a cloud and then it will create rain that will then kind of plant their spores, you know? Like it's so wow. smart. And so I'm just so happy that I get to like um, yeah. teach a little bit uh, on some of this intelligence and um, kind of blow our minds open to what's possible and how our mother earth is alive and sentient and sacred. And we are part of that intelligence. So I'm just, yeah. I feel blessed. I've got to throw in one other story that you may not have heard of because you're especially as Looks like Matt's internet. They're, they're little... your, your internet froze, Matt. You'll have to start from the beginning and uh, you're a little ways from your computer, so you'll need to speak up also. Oh, I got my... I don't know if mic. it's on. Well, the mic, it should be on, yeah. Um, oh, well... Uh, um, so prairie dog uh, settlements attract rain, it turns out, out in the South Dakota, North Dakota, um, because they, the little tunnels attract rain to the ground and they find if there's prairie dogs there, there's more rain. So, wow, who'd have thunk it, you know? <laughs> Big animal. <laughs> All right, gee, I should have let you finish, but uh, there we go. <laughs> well, I'll finish with, Thank and people, people know how to make rain too. We know how to make rain and we're going to need to do that in these coming droughts. And so we need to learn how to work with the intelligence of nature. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Tara. So, thanks, you Matt. Bet. All right. Thanks, Tara. Yeah, thank that was a jam-packed preview. <laughs> that was awesome. This is a preview of Jolie's upcoming class, The Intelligence of Nature. And uh, fascinating class. If this kind of stuff intrigues you, uh, we'll have a full two hours on it. Uh, with Jolie. Just to be clear, this was a preview with Matt and Jolie, but this class, The Intelligence of Nature, will just be with Jolie um, and will be sure to enlighten, delight, and um, be fascinating. So I, where you see this video uh, on Facebook, you'll have a link to this class in the description above. Otherwise, always going to the Matthew Wood Institute of Herbalism. Currently, our, our new and upcoming classes are on the homepage, so it's here. If you happen to see this later, you can go to our all courses and search intelligence, I believe, and it should just come up like that. So that's a way that you can find it later as well. So we hope to see you there. You can join at any time. Uh, if you join now, you'll be able to enjoy the live online recording with Jolie. Uh, if you join later after the recording, after the live event, you'll be able to enjoy the recording and also have online uh, Q&A with Jolie. So uh, there you go. See you later, Matt and Jolie. Have a great day. Bye. Mm -hmm. oh.